Good afternoon, everyone. You're watching Interview of the Day, and my name is Galia Hasinhanova. Today, we're talking to Mr. Christopher Campbell Holt, Registrar and Chief Executive of the AIFC Court and IAC. Good afternoon, Mr. Campbell Holt. Let us talk about the event that will take place on June 27th, uh, which will present the results of the work of the court over the sixth month of 2022. What has been done over this time and how many cases have been in processing? Well, firstly, thank you very much for having me on your program. It's been some time since I've had the good fortune to do this type of interview, so I'm delighted to have this opportunity to do so now. Um, we've just entered the second half of our, uh, well, we're entering the second half of our four, fifth year of operations, both for our courts and our arbitration centre in the AFC in Kazakhstan. And we've witnessed really, um, really unprecedented um, case numbers in terms of what we do. So typically with our type of project, which is here to create more investment opportunities, mm -hmm. be more attractive for Kazakhstan, for the Eurasia region, our courts now and the arbitration centre completed more than 1,000 cases. Mm -hmm. That's never been achieved anywhere in the world for our type of project. So what it's done is immediately put Kazakhstan on the map as a world leader in terms of commercial dispute resolution, which does then have knock-on positive effects for attracting international investment to Kazakhstan mm -hmm. and the wider Eurasia region. So, so far, it's 152 cases just this year alone mm -hmm. out of the more than 1,000 cases. And that's involved multiple court cases, all enforced within the entire territory of Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. It's involved arbitration cases and mediation. So the full suite, if you like, of international standard commercial dispute resolution. Mm -hmm. And critically, these are the most distinguished judges, the most mm -hmm. trusted English common law judges anywhere in the world, as well as the arbitrators and mediators. So we're really now building trust and confidence for the invest investors coming to Kazakhstan. What are the most common types of cases that the court sees? So it's a full spectrum of commercial dispute mm -hmm. resolution. So most of the cases have evolved around um, contracts or uh, contractual mm -hmm. arrangements mm -hmm. between foreign investors and investors in Kazakhstan or Kazakh to Kazakh investors or mm -hmm. Kazakh individuals or foreign individuals and Kazakh government individuals. Um, and it's contractual disputes, typically non-payment under those disputes. Mm -hmm. It's non-fulfillment of other contractual obligations. Mm -hmm. So your typical commercial dispute. And it touches every day business people's lives in so many different ways. It's mm -hmm. sales contracts, mm -hmm. production contracts, oil and gas contracts, other energy contracts, land contracts, banking arrangements. Um, so it really is a full suite of commercial investment um, problems that come up in daily business practices, which investors, not just in Kazakhstan, throughout the world, are familiar with in, in their daily practices. But now in Kazakhstan, for the last four and a half years, we've been able to say truthfully that we can, at the highest international standard, protect fairly mm -hmm. equally and independently with absolute robust impartiality and incorruptibility, um, totally be trusted to resolve and protect those rights of investors in Kazakhstan and for the future investors coming to Kazakhstan in, in future years. That's very impressive. How long do the proceedings usually take before the final judgment is delivered? Do people have to wait for years and years or does that like happen right away? No, I mean, obviously it depends on the complexity of the case, the, the challenges of the law, the facts, the witnesses, and there are lots of complex matters which goes into any commercial dispute, which can, will determine ultimately uh, the length of the proceedings that are necessary. And in our type of common law legal system, um, we don't have a fixed time where every single case must be resolved, say, within two or three months. Mm -hmm. It depends on the judge's uh, personal discretion and their judgment. And they decide what they believe as an independent justice, what is in the best interests of justice. And then it needs to be seen to be done so that we all trust and believe and follow the judgments of, of the judges. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens. So our cases have been resolved sometimes extremely quickly, and mm -hmm. literally in a, a matter of hours wow. um, to uh, a matter of a few months, depending mm -hmm. on the complexity of the case. So a very simple case will be resolved very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. The judges are always available. The arbitrators and mediators are there 24-7 to support uh, our dispute resolution needs. So we aim and aspire to be a truly responsive dispute resolution business at the heart of the AFC in Kazakhstan and to meet the needs, the dispute resolution needs, the protection of investor rights through the court and arbitration center at the AIFC. That's wonderful. That means the court is very effective in responding and processing the cases. I, I see why investors would be interested in coming here and feeling safe, probably. Um, let me read a passage uh, since we're talk talking about the cases. 
Let me read a passage from this December report that I saw on your website. All court judgments were enforced to 100% satisfaction using the AFC court's special step-by-step -step enforcement procedure. How does that procedure work? Thank you, yeah. Um, at the heart of our business, any dispute resolution business in, anywhere in the world is enforcement. That is critically important. What's the point um, investors coming here, if they have a dispute, they get it resolved the way that they expect, mm -hmm. but they can't then get paid by the party who they've um, beaten mm -hmm. in, the, in the proceedings. Um, so we, from the very beginning of our project, we, we obviously we realised that. So we set up a step-by-step -step procedure mm -hmm. signed by our first Chief Justice of the AFC Court, Lord Wolfe, who retired mm -hmm. uh, two years ago and has been succeeded by the Right Honourable the Lord Mance, mm -hmm. a very distinguished English judge from the Supreme Court in, in London previously. Um, and uh, we signed this agreement with the National Bailiffs Chamber for enforcement against private assets. And we also signed it with the Minister of Justice of Kazakhstan mm -hmm. for enforcement against Kazakh state assets, if that's necessary, as it has been in three of our cases so far. And the process works very smoothly. It works smoothly because we have a step-by-step -step procedure. It does not involve interaction with the national courts. Mm -hmm. We have special cooperation and deep friendship and trust with our friends at the national courts of Kazakhstan, particularly mm -hmm. the Chief Justice of the National Courts, His Excellency Chairman Asanov, who has become, has become a dear friend of ours at the AFC Court and Arbitration Centre for many years. Um, but we don't work with them on this. This has to be independent in the eyes of the investors. So we have mm -hmm. our own special enforcement system mm -hmm. working directly with the enforcement agents and, where necessary, the Ministry of Justice. And so far it's been successful. 100% satisfaction in our way means um, that the parties have been paid. Um, and we do have ongoing uh, enforcement matters all the time uh, through our court with the enforcement agents. Well, um, most of the cases are resolved through mediation. What does that mean and what is the advantage of such a way? So when we first created the Court and Arbitration Centre some years ago, uh, we wanted to create a platform that would provide all manner, all different types of commercial dispute resolution. Mm -hmm. The idea was to provide options for businesses. The more options they have to resolve disputes in the way that they're comfortable with, mm -hmm. the more likely they are to trust us and then invest into Kazakhstan. So we've done that and we've, we provide all opportunities. So mediation was something we created, but to be honest, we didn't expect it to be that popular. Mm -hmm. My previous experience some years ago was in Qatar in the Middle East, and we thought mediation would be very popular then. It wasn't popular at all. Everyone wanted informal negotiations in private settings, mm -hmm. or they wanted arbitration, or they wanted to go straight to court. Mm -hmm. But in Kazakhstan, we've noticed considerable interest in mediation. Um, and the idea is that it's a more friendly, a more relaxed, mm -hmm. sometimes more amicable way of resolving a dispute. And at the heart of it, of course, is absolute privacy for the parties. So mm. the public don't know that they're in dispute. They don't know ah. what the terms of the dispute therefore are. Um, sometimes it can be more cost effective because it can be a very quick way to resolve a dispute. And really what it is, if I'm summarizing it in the most basic way, it's a, it's a formalized discussion between two parties or more parties in dispute mm -hmm. by a third party neutral, so an independent facilitator of a conversation, mm -hmm. almost like a very highly skilled expert counsellor who brings the parties together through discussion. And the hope is that within a day or less than that, in our case often, the parties mutually agree to cooperate and find a solution mm -hmm. together with the support of this independent person facilitating the discussion mm -hmm. without taking sides, they're totally independent. And that's a very good way, a very successful way for business people in particular to not lose face, mm. to continue to be friends and hopefully mm. to continue doing business relations in the future. Yeah. So it is increasingly very popular in Kazakhstan. I understand the national courts of Kazakhstan have proactively encouraged parties mm. to use mediation as opposed to more traditional court mm -hmm. and arbitration um, dispute resolution. And we've done the same. And I think the market for this in Kazakhstan has been exponential and not just Kazakhstan, but the whole region. So it's something we've promoted heavily and will continue to do so for the time being. Um, mm -hmm. If parties are successful at mediation, mm -hmm. then there's no need to go to court, there's no need to go for arbitration. Um, so we've had a lot of success with mediation, so it has not been necessary for those parties to go to arbitration or to mm -hmm. litigation. Mm -hmm. And that's why those mediation numbers have been so high compared to the arbitration and the court. But I should say the court numbers and the arbitration numbers are significantly increasing as well. Mm -hmm. And that's not as a result of the failure of mediation. Uh -huh. It's just that some parties don't want to go to mediation. They just want arbitration or they just want to go to court. And that's their right. And that's why we provided everything as a possibility for the parties so that they can basically resolve their disputes in a way that they are comfortable. And in return, as I said, uh, we get their trust and they invest more into Kazakhstan. On Monday, the IAFC, in partnership with the Demonfort University, is announcing the opening of an English 
learning center for legal and financial sector specifically. Is there a demand for that? Absolutely there is. If there wasn't a demand, mm -hmm. or at least potential for demand, we wouldn't be wasting our time creating it. So we're sitting right now in mm -hmm. the business lounge of our new IAC chambers. Mm -hmm. It's the new IAC chambers of the AFC court and our IAC, the International Arbitration Centre. We got the idea many years ago when we first created this court and arbitration centre, but we're launching it now because we now believe there's real need mm -hmm. and interest in it. And our first objective was to create a world-class court and arbitration centre and to attract users, to have people trust us and use us. That's mm -hmm. been enormously successful, as I've mentioned already in this interview. So the next step for us in our phase development was to build a chambers, a place within our building with online and physical premises to meet the dispute resolution needs. Mm -hmm. I don't mean rule, procedural rules, laws, as we have in the court. I don't mean judges, arbitrators. I mean premises which mm -hmm. parties, the lawyers in dispute representing their clients, can be treating like a home. Mm -hmm. So they come here, we provide all the catering facilities they need. Mm -hmm. We have desks, we have telephones, video hearing technology, mm -hmm. uh, all the stationery that you require. We have critically secure document storage areas, printing mm -hmm. facilities, translation facilities, mm -hmm. uh, transcription facilities, um, um, help, help with airport transportation, with tickets, hotel discounts, you name it. Mm -hmm. Whatever lawyers need to support them so that when they come to Kazakhstan, often this will be the first time some of the international lawyers have come to Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. we want them to be comfortable. We want them to come back to Kazakhstan <laughs> multiple times and for them oh. to have the most comfortable experience when they're here. Mm -hmm. The more comfortable they are, the less they have to worry about mm. everyday logistical things because we'll do it for them. Um, the more likely they're to come back, the more likely they're to trust us, mm -hmm. and the more able they are to focus on the issues in their disputes mm -hmm. and meet the needs of their clients with what they're here to do, which is to defend or represent their parties in dispute resolution. So we have partnered with our friends in Singapore mm -hmm. and uh, Maxwell Chambers, which is one of the world's most distinguished chambers, uh, similar to ours. And we're also working closely with our friends in London at the mm -hmm. IDRC, the International Dispute Resolution Centre, mm -hmm. and also perhaps friends in Toronto in Canada, so we're really proud of this achievement. This is the first, the only type of facility like this in the entirety of Eurasia. Mm -hmm. And we've modelled ourselves on London, particularly, and Singapore, because we know those two are the best in the world, and we want our centre in Kazakhstan to be the best in the world in every possible way, or the best, at least, for Eurasia. Mm -hmm. So we've built that process. Um, the other thing that we're working on is a partnership with De Montfort University Kazakhstan, which you mentioned in your question. And that's very important for us. Mm -hmm. um, we've worked out together a really world-class English language learning centre mm -hmm. with that university. DMUK is the first British university to be based mm -hmm. in Kazakhstan. They're actually based in Almaty. And what we've done, because English language is the mm -hmm. main language officially mm -hmm. of the proceedings of our court, albeit we operate mostly in Russian and Kazakh <laughs> languages because that's what the parties want, and so we do it, mm -hmm. because we're here to meet the needs uh, and demands of the parties, not ourselves. But we are ultimately an English language uh, court. Mm -hmm. So because the judges are English, and I'm English, well, and we speak English yeah, as well course, as Russian. So we wanted to bring the world's best English language training and testing. Mm -hmm. So we're partnering with DMUK, with the British Council, with IELTS, and we will be rolling out a series of training courses and testing in our premises and also, I believe, online in the coming months to support Kazakhstan people who want to learn more English language at the highest uh, English international standard. Mm -hmm. And our hope, true hope, is that most of those people, or mo more of those people, will be the people using our court and arbitration centre in the future and delivering mm -hmm. their advocacy in front of our English judges in English language. Mm -hmm. Or if not, being able to conduct business in a more successful way with mm -hmm. other international business partners when necessary, not just in Russian, but when necessary in English language. So we believe we have a really important role to play to support the people of Kazakhstan to use our facility, but also to help in a more general sense to help with the business climate attractiveness overall through our court and arbitration centre. So on Monday, we're, we're absolutely mm -hmm. thrilled to be able to launch this new world-class IEC Chambers. Mm -hmm. And secondly, our international standard English language training centre with our friends from De Montfort University, Kazakhstan mm -hmm. and the British Council. Well, thank you very much for giving us your time. Thank you for coming here and goodbye.